Germany has just set a new record for renewable energy generation this year, but there is still one unfortunately big problem. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and supporting the channel. Ultimately, really, I feel like the purpose of this channel is to promote electric cars, the best electric cars, whether or not um, that's what you want to hear or not. I don't, it's not really something I'm worried about. I try to just tell you the truth as I see it, the objective truth, the weight of a car, the specs of a car. Some people don't like it. Some people just want me to say great things about whatever car they bought. I understand how you feel. I'm just not the kind of person to do that, unfortunately. I know many people do that because they, they just want to tell you everything you want to hear, make you feel good. But here on the channel, I want to tell you what's going on with renewable energy. What's going to happen in the future? What's going on with car companies? What's going to happen in the future? Those sorts of things. Now, I feel as though many of the original kind of websites that supported clean energy and electric cars have now turned against their main mission. And now all they really care about is the click. They just want you to click. I'll say anything to get you to click. That's why they're talking about Twitter all the time. And what has Twitter got to do with renewable energy? What has Twitter got to do with changing the world and ending pollution, making the air clean for us to breathe so we stop getting cancer by the millions, which is what's happening right now because of internal combustion engine vehicles. That's the point of this channel. The point of those websites originally was the same thing. Very sadly, they've lost their way. And I find that extremely disappointing. The reason being that I've had some pretty bad news lately. I'll tell you about a bit more about it when I can't talk about it at the moment. But it's something where I've felt the direct result of what's going on in the world personally. And it's made me realize that too many people are getting caught up in politics, caught up in the Twitter space, caught up in their opinions and feelings on whether someone said something that offends their perspectives. I don't understand. I don't understand because that is not the mission of electric cars. That is not the mission of renewable energy. That is not the mission of battery technology. The mission of those things is to make the world a better place. Why are we getting sidetracked constantly by utter garbage? Utter garbage. Republicans, Democrats, Liberal, Labor. I don't know doesn't matter. To me, the key thing we need to focus on is being united, being united and trying to educate those people. I just made a video right where half of Americans believe you can't recycle electric car batteries. They're going to end up in toxic waste dumps. That's what they think. They have all these crazy misguided beliefs. Half of Australians, the same thing. Probably half of the people in New Zealand, probably half the people in most countries in the world believe so much nonsense that's coming from the fossil fuel industry. Now, if you want to get just distracted and sidetracked with what Elon Musk is tweeting or what he had for breakfast, you know, go right ahead. But frankly, I don't see how that is relevant to our lives, our kids' lives, or the future of the planet. In fact, it's completely and utterly irrelevant. Please, for the love of everything that's good in the world, for the love of progress, for the love of what we want to do as and which is to make the world a better place. Don't get caught up in these Women's Day magazine nonsense. This is the kind of stuff. This is like the Sussexes. This is like the Harry and what's her name? Megan nonsense. I don't know what their names are, but you know, people who listen to this stuff, they're rotting their heads like Jim Rohn would say, right? What does Jim Rohn say? He says, pessimism. Pessimism, the deadly disease of always looking on the bad side, the problem side, the difficult side. Checking all the reasons why it can't be done. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right. He tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue. He looks for faults. And when he finds them, he's delighted. How ugly. This is the poor guy. Looks through the window. Doesn't see the sunset. He sees the specks on the window. And this is the poor guy who rushes up, takes such leave of his senses. This guy rushes up and he says, I've got five good reasons why it won't work. He's so dumb. He doesn't know. All you need is one. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. Why would the same measure affect people two different ways? Answer. 
it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are, that affects us the most. There's a subject called better thinking habits. When I met my mentor, he taught me. He said, poor thinking habits keep most people poor. Not poor working habits, poor thinking habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. And Shove taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, as you think, so you become. How powerful, how awesome. When he talked about poor thinking habits, he had me. And this applies to me. I used to start the day reading the morning newspaper. I mean, you can believe that or not. I'd get a cup of coffee and I'd read the paper. I'd load up on wars and riots and tragedies and stabbings and killings and bank robberies and muggings and car wrecks and tragedies. Every bad thing you can imagine. I'd even read the back pages. I seem to like that stuff for some weird reason. I'd load up on all that and then I'd start the day. You can imagine the kind of days I used to have. You walk around on your financial knees. They call you economic peewee. The guy says, I want to be a great leader. The first thing we do is follow him to his home. When we get there, we walk in and check his library. Somebody says, well, why check his library? Why would you do that? The reason is, because what a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory and the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have in their house to read. One of the best dressed up words I know for a lot of it is trash. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming up with a rich, dynamic, positive life, it can't be done. You might as well try making a cake with cement. Jim says, the kids back in Danbury High School in Connecticut, they're asking me questions one day. I'm talking to the kids. One of them says to me, Mr. Roan, how do you build the good life? I said, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's how you build anything. Select the right ingredients, keep out the wrong ingredients, and it starts with thought. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You've got to be wise and you've got to be careful. I asked the kids, what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be fine. I said, but what if somebody dropped strychnine poison in my coffee? And they said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson one, life is both sugar and strychnine. You've got to be careful. I asked, what if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, well, you'd be okay. And I said, well, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the poisonous strychnine? And they said, you'd be dead. I said, correct. See, it doesn't matter who hands you the bad stuff. It doesn't matter which website you're reading it on. It doesn't matter which YouTube channel is brainwashing you. It'll still do its damage on your bank account, wherever you get it. Mr. Shof gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him. He said, Jim, every day, stand guard at the door of your mind. Stand guard at the door of your mind. You decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want, trash, into your mental factory. Because you and no one else, only you, have to live with the results. And on that note, Germany is set to produce a record 256 terawatt hours of electricity from renewable sources this year. Preliminary data by the Working Group on Renewable Energy Statistics show that the sunny weather helped boost solar PV production 23% compared to 2021, while wind power production also increased. 
However, to stay on track to reaching 600 terawatt hours by 2030, or 80% of total power consumption, meaning, well, Germany wants to reach 80% of total power being renewable by 2030. That's a pretty good goal to have, I think. Renewables would have to have hit around 270 terawatts this year. But to be honest, it's still definitely within the realms of Germany's capability. They can still hit that target of 600 terawatts by 2030. I'm convinced that that's more than seven years away, seven and a half years away. They definitely can do it. And I believe firmly that they will. In fact, I think they'll easily hit more than 80% by 2030. Remember, the cost of renewables continues to go down consistently. Overall, renewables will have produced 46% of German power consumption in 2022, up from 41% in 2021. Nearly half of all power in Germany this year has come from renewable energy. UBA head Dirk Mester said the focus must be on expanding onshore wind power only if the right groundwork is laid. Is there hope of achieving climate goals and overcoming dependence on Russian natural gas and fossil raw materials, he added? Yes. Shortly after taking office, the German coalition government put into motion one of the largest reform efforts on renewable energy and efficiency the country has ever seen in history. In fact, it is the largest. Russia's war in Ukraine and the coinciding energy crisis have prompted the economy and climate ministry to present many amendments to existing laws and funding schemes much faster than they had originally planned. These are mainly geared towards boosting the country's renewable energy capacity, especially onshore wind, but also to accelerate grid planning and the development of offshore wind connections and to make building stock more efficient. Many of the reforms have already been decided in Parliament during 2022. AGEE stat is made up of experts from various federal ministries and agencies and consolidates data on the development of renewable energy in Germany. And that's where this information has come. Anyway, the key point here is Germany is nearly at 50% renewables. They're planning on hitting 80% by 2030. In fact, I think you can fairly say getting from 50 to 80 in seven years, seven and a half years would be absolute piece of cake for Germany. I'm convinced they can actually get to 90 plus percent. So Germany has set very similar goals to Australia. Australia is aiming for 82% by 2030. Germany is saying 80%. I think both countries will easily hit around 85% by the end of this decade, which will completely transform their energy grids. Eventually, probably within about 15 years in Australia and Germany and many other countries as well around the world, there will be a massive overabundance of energy. There'll be more energy than we could possibly need. The grid will be simply wasting a lot of energy. What will that mean? Well, there'll be plenty of energy that will be virtually free. I know, I've been saying this for a long time, and many of you say, you're crazy. How can you say this? Energy won't be virtual. Mar- energy won't be at marginal cost. Well, you should listen to Tony Sieber talk about marginal cost. I'll put some links in the description below. Rethink X is his YouTube channel. That's where I actually got that idea, and from Singularity University and Peter Diamandis who originally inspired me to create this YouTube channel. Why did they inspire me to do this? Because I want to let you all know the future of the world is a positive one. It's not going to hell in a handbasket. It doesn't matter what anyone tells you about tweets or anything else. It's not relevant. What's relevant is what I'm telling you now about Germany, about their renewable energy, about Australia, about renewable energy, about the movements going on in the United States and Texas, and not just in Texas, but all over the United States to install massive amounts of renewable energy. It's about this happening in many countries around the world. It's about electric cars being powered by renewable energy and by us having a better future and leaving behind a better world for our children. We most certainly will. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be tough, but we'll get there. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.